Hey everybody, my name is Maraid and welcome to my channel. I know it's been a while since I've posted a video. Um, my face has not been that great so I haven't really wanted to put a whole lot of makeup on. And then there's just have been things that have kind of made this month a little crazy. And then mentally I've just been going through a lot. So that's, those are the big reasons why. So, it is the end of the month, so per usual, I'm going to share my monthly favorites and hate it. I don't have a whole lot to share just because given my face situation, I haven't been buying a lot of new products and I haven't been trying out a lot of stuff, so this is going to be a very quick video. Starting off with my favorites. Um, the first one is these Eco Tools um, mask remover sponges for I think two fifty. You get a pack of two. Um, I really like these. Um, they're just kind of spongy, and then when they're wet, they obviously they soften down. Um, they work really well to take off mud masks and I've they also exfoliate your skin so days where I wear a mud mask and I use these I don't exfoliate just because otherwise I'll rub my face raw so they're inexpensive they're really great and like I said it makes taking masks off really easy especially since you know um, more like charcoal mud masks it, I feel like they're always kind of a pain to get out because then I'm always afraid that it'll stain a towel or something like that but with these it makes it so much easier and then my next favorite is the Garnier skin active moisture balm sheet mask um, with the prescribed face stuff that I'm using given by my dermatologist um, it really dries out my face especially since I have to use the a benzoyl peroxide based product first and then this other stuff so then my face is really dry and things like that but this these sheet masks give the extra boost of moisture and I've been straying more towards the Garnier moisture bomb skin masks instead of the usual Korean um, beauty ones I've been using but yeah, they're super uh, affordable I think again like 250 um, this specific one that I bought and I've been using it has green tea in it so it kind of helps with reducing pores which is great too because I have really bad pores um, around my nose and especially given the stuff that I'm using my pores seem worse almost and I've been getting blackheads and shit like that but yeah I use this maybe three times a week and I do my little trick with the blotting paper so each packet lasts me two uses with the blotting paper so the next thing is the Alba Botanica fast fix for puffy eyes I uh, revive cooling gel. I've been having a lot of kind of like allergy-esque things going on the past couple months so my eyes have been super itchy on and off and then in the mornings they'll just be super puffy but this stuff has helped a lot. It, it obviously it doesn't completely fix the problem but I found that it really helps and I'll use it um a little bit in the morning and a little bit in kind of the late afternoon and it doesn't sting it doesn't cause any irritation it's has a hundred percent vegetarian ingredients so there's not anything that could harm your eyes or anything like that even though you shouldn't obviously get it in your eyes I it's a great product obviously it's not um, it's 
not going to mystically cure puffy eyes. It's not going to mystically stop allergy symptoms. But it's great even just for a little temporary fix. Okay, so the next couple things are non-beauty related. But I still felt like I really want to share them. So the first one is a book. This is Milk and Honey. This is that book that you've seen all over the place, but you don't really know what it is. I've seen it a lot on um, Twitter and Instagram. So this book, I don't know how to say her name, so I'm not going to try to because I don't want to butcher it. But it is a collection of poetry. I read this in about in one sitting within like an hour probably more like half an hour so I've actually read it twice because I felt like I needed to read it again to take in the poetry a bit more but oh my fucking god the poetry in this book is so relatable on so many levels and personally I'm one of those people I'm not the biggest fan of poetry but I felt like because I had seen this book everywhere I needed to read it but yeah it has it's separated into four different parts separated into four different parts and it kind of takes you down this oh down like this road not necessarily about her about the entirety of life but it talks about kind of abuse it talks about relationships it talks about um breakups and there's bits that I just found were so relatable on so many levels. Especially in the um, in the first three parts. Not so much the fourth part because I kind of feel like I'm entering into that stage of my life. Even though, because I'm not... The fourth part is um, the healing. And... I'm not going to go into it that deep, but it's a really great read. I highly suggest it. I suggest if you do read this, read it twice, just because the first time you kind of read it and you're like, oh, okay, I really relate to this. But then when you read it the second time, you just take in the words so much more. And yeah, I, it's a good read. It's some great poetry. Okay, the next thing... Hmm, this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. My next thing is the Kwon Ji Young album. This album, the concept of the physical album is so cool to me. I personally have never seen it, even though I know there's been artists who have done it. So you open it up and it's a US <laughs> so I hit myself in the face. It's a USB. Just this little USB and it has his it has his name, birthday, and um, light type on it. And so you get the USB, you plug the USB into your computer, and then it has a code on the physical thing. And then you get to download the music. And then there's some artwork, and then you get access to a few videos, as well as, um, like, the lyrics. So the... Nice typed out lyrics and yeah, it's, I love this album. I really like the music on it and everything like that. This, the physical copy is expensive. Seeing as though I think the iTunes version, it's like $4, $5. Like it's really cheap on iTunes and it's five songs and this is $40. I paid 35 but most places it's $40. So that part is kind of a downer, but I like having the physical copy. I like the USB concept, which, yeah, it's, it's just, it's so pretty looking too. I had this for like, obviously around a couple weeks, and then I was finally like, okay, I'm going to take it out, because I didn't want to touch the USB part, but then it did, um, because... I had heard and read articles and stuff like that that the red was supposed to come off from the USB, but it didn't really come off on mine for some reason. But yeah. If you like K pop, listen to this album. 
my last favorite is um it's actually well it's kind of a two-parter book and movie so dunkirk this book is really good um obviously if you want to read deep in more depth about dunkirk this is a good starting point but then you can read on reading more books but this book is written by joshua levine he was actually the historian uh i don't know what you call it or what he says he is um historical advisor he was the historical advisor on the movie uh again it's a really good read if you want to read more in depth about dunkirk good starting place but there's better and broader books okay, now for the movie let's talk about the movie i will not give spoilers just because obviously everyone hates spoilers blah 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 but i saw dunkirk the day after it came out so that saturday i went to the very first showing my younger brother and i did oh my god visually the movie is amazing um it definitely is you can tell that it's an imax movie i didn't see it in imax but i do want to go see it again in imax um there's very little dialogue which i think makes the movie more powerful uh it's just is all around a very beautiful movie and it's very emotional even though there's not a whole lot of dialogue you can feel the emotion and you kind of not necessarily makes you feel like you're there but that same kind of feeling i especially think that because there have been many veterans who were at dunkirk who went and saw this movie and were kind of like this makes me feel like i was back on that beach which there's this one video i'll link it down below or in the corner of this um veteran who was actually there and it oh my gosh he was he literally said how you know this movie made me think of my buddies and who had died in the war and the time that i spent there and i was he was 20 at the time uh but then went on to saying that how you know we never apparently can learn to not resolve everything through war which i thought was kind of a hard point uh i know a lot of people are going to go see dunkirk specifically for harry styles and for me personally harry styles's character is a fucking prick and his performance didn't stay with me it didn't like resonate with me it's not something that i when i think of dunkirk his performance is not what immediately pops in my head but the the performances that stuck with me the most and I feel like were the most powerful were um, Tom Hardy's performance, Killian Murphy, Mark Rylance, and then Kenneth uh, Branagh. And Finn, Finn, Whitehead, sort of not necessarily as much as the other four. But for me, those four, they really stuck with me and... I initially wanted to see the movie specifically for Killian Murphy just because he's a great actor and Peaky Blinders is one of my favorite shows and everything he's in it always kind of strikes a chord with me and uh, I felt like the characters in the movie that don't have names are the ones that meant the most. And are the ones that kind of stay with you more than those who have names, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, and it's just, it's one of those things where I see people on Twitter and they're all obsessed, obsessive about Harry Styles in it. And it's like, you know what, if it was a teen heartthrob movie, I would understand that. But the fact that this movie is based off of a serious historical event and is an event that we probably all should know about and was a huge part of World War II. It, it's a more serious matter and I think fangirling over Harry Styles is a little idiotic and inappropriate. Again, this is just me, but yeah, I just, I highly suggest the movie. Um, but don't go if you're just gonna go for Harry Styles. 
And I think people who are all like, oh, well, Harry Styles is the first person, blah, blah, I don't give a flying fuck. He wasn't the best part of the movie. There were better actors in the movie. End of discussion. Okay? Okay. Okay. Moving on to hate it. I hate this goddamn fucking Adapalene gel bullshit. This is the reason why my face looks like shit and I fucking hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Hate is a very strong word, but I fucking hate it. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed. Everything will be listed in the description box down below as well as the Fandango link for Dunkirk. Obviously, I'm not sponsored for that, but I think you should really go see it. Go see it. Just go see it. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already and give this video a thumbs up. I love you all and I'll see you in my next video.